Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. Also, feel free to share and drop your comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. In today's tutorial, we will be diving into generalized linear models, GLM, versus generalized linear mixed models, GLMM. So these models are powerful tools in statistical analysis, but knowing when to use each one is crucial. In this tutorial, we will explore their key differences, assumptions, and real life applications using a data set on study hours and test scores. By the end of this video, you will understand how these models handle different types of data and why GLMM is more flexible in certain scenarios. So let's jump right in and break it all down. So the GLM versus GLMM. So understanding the key differences and when to use them is very important. Introduction. When analyzing data, especially in research and reward applications, we often use generalized linear models or generalized linear mixed models. So, um, but let us talk about what these models are. So, one, we're going to look at what are these models. Two, when should um, we use one over the other? And thirdly, what assumptions must be met for each? This tutorial will break it down in simple and practical way using real life examples. So, understanding general, generalized linear mixed, uh, sorry, the generalized linear models otherwise known as the GLM. So what is a GLM? This is an extension of the traditional linear regression model that, that allows us to analyze non-normally distributed data. For example, the traditional regression assumes that the outcome variable, otherwise known as a dependent variable, is normally distributed. But in reality, many variables don't follow a normal distribution. Example, when we are predicting whether a student passes or fails an examination, which is a binary outcome for pass and fail. And secondly, when we are counting the number of times a customer visits a store in a month. So the generalized linear model solves this by allowing different types of link functions and distributions depending on the nature of the outcome variables. So we have the types of um, GLM, we have one, the logistic regression. So we make use of the logistic regression when we are having binary outcome for predicting whether a patient has a disease. That is an example, predicting whether a patient has a disease or not. Also, we use the GLM when we're having a poison regression. And uh, when we use it is when we're having count data. For example, predicting how many times a student will be absent in a term. For uh, the GLM is also used when we're having a Gaussian uh, regression, which is a normal regression. And we make use of it when we're having continuous data. An example is predicting student test score scores based on study hours. So what are the key assumptions of GLM? The first assumption is the linearity of our predictors. So the independent variable should have a linear relationship with the transformed dependent variable. Two, independence of observations. So each data point should be independent of the others. Thirdly, correct distribution assumption. So the outcome variable should match the chosen dist um, distribution. For example, binary for logistic regression and count for poison. Now let's go to understanding the generalized linear mixed models. So what is a GLMM? The GLMM builds on the GLM by adding random effects. 
which accounts for variations across different groups or clusters in the data. This is important when your data is hierarchical or grouped. Example, predicting student test scores. So now imagine you want to predict student test scores based on the number of hours they study. Using the GLM, uh, we could build a model using study hours as the independent variable. But for the GLMM, uh, uh, you could consider that student belongs to different groups and schools and schools difference might affect test scores okay so here the school is the random effect now this is why the GLMM is more flexible than GLM for real world applications where data is structured or group so what are the assumptions the key assumptions of GLMM one random effects are normally distributed so the groups e.g the schools hospitals as the case may be should have effects that are normally distributed two appropriate covariance structure so the random effect should be correctly specified for example students in the same schools are more similar and thirdly same assumptions as the GLM so we have the linearity the independence and correct distribution still applies so understanding the differences between GLM and uh, GLMM will, all, will help us in picking which model will be a best fit. Number one, as, assumes independence. So the GLM assumes independence, why the GLMM does not. And this is an explanation for it. So the GLM assumes that all data points are independent of each other. The GLMM does not assume independence because it accounts for grouped or hierarchical data where some observations are more related than others. Example, predicting student exam scores. So for the GLM approach, you predict student exam scores based on study hours. So and it assumes that each student is independent. For the GLMM approach, students come from different schools and, dif and the school differences may affect scores. So school is a random effect, meaning students within the same school are more similar. So why does this matter? If you ignore school effects, your model might miss important variations in the data. Secondly, we have um, it uh, handles group data. So GLM does not handle group data, but the GLMM does. The GLM cannot directly handle group or hierarchical data. It assumes all data points from a single population. Whereas the GLMM can model groups slash clusters, making it better for structured data. In understanding the key difference, we can have an example here predicting hospital um, readmission rates. So for the GLM approach, this predicts if a patient will be readmitted based on age, body mass index, and med medical history. It assumes that all patients are independent. But for the GLMM approach, patients are from different hospital. Sorry, patients from different hospitals are from different hospital one, and hospitals may have different treatment methods. So hospital is a random effect to account for these differences. So why does this matter? If you ignore hospital differences, your predictions might be inaccurate. Thirdly, in understanding the GLM and GLMM includes random effects so the glm does not include random effects the glmm the glmm on the other hand does so the glm only includes fixed effects which are the predictors that applies to the entire data set but then the glmm includes random effects which allows variation across groups example let's say an employee we have an employee performance in a company. So for the GLM approach, we have predicts employee performance based on education, experience, and age. And it assumes that no variation between different departments. But for GLMM approach, we have different departments. We have different work cultures affecting their performance. So department is a random effect. And why does this matter? Ignoring random effects could lead to misleading conclusions. Four, we have the use of simple regression. So GLM use simple regression, whereas 
so the glm m is not good for simple regression the glm is good for simple regression problems when data is independent and unstructured the glm m on the other hand is not good for regression it is meant for hierarchical data example predicting house prices so for the glm approach it predicts house prices based on size number of bedrooms and location so works well when works well because houses are independent observations for the glmm approach not needed unless houses are grouped by real estate agents agencies with different pricing strategies why does this matter if the data is simple using glmm might be unnecessarily so it might be unnecessary to pick the glmm model for this case so number five is it is used for hierarchical data so glm is not used for hierarchical data whereas glmm is so the glm does not work well when data is hierarchical e.g students within schools patients within hospitals but then the glmm is designed for hierarchical data capturing dependency within groups example customer purchase behavior across cities GLM approach predicts whether a customer buys a product based on income and age, and it assumes that all customers are independent. For the GLMM approach, customers from different cities and shopping behave, behavior may differ by city. So city is a random effect to account for location-based variation. So why does this matter? GLMM prevents false assumptions of independence making prediction more reliable so in summary when to use glm versus glmm so we use glm when our observations are independent our data is simple no group which means no grouping and we don't need random effects so we make use of glmm when our data has groups and we need to model random effects and finally ignoring group structure would cause misleading results so what are the real life applications one one for medical research such as diabetes prediction glm with glm we can predict whether a patient has diabetes based on age and body mass index when we are having binary outcome yes or no the GLMM, we could account for hospital differences, that is, patients from different hospitals might have different treatment response. Also, in education, to check students' performance analysis. So, the GLM might be used to predict students' final score based on the number of hours they study. And the GLMM can also be used to add a random effect for schools because different schools might have different teaching methods. Also, it can be used for customer behavior in retail industry. The GLM can be used to predict the number of times a customer will visit a store in a month, such as uh, the poison um, regression. And the GLMM, on the other hand, can account for regional differences, e.g. customers in urban areas versus rural areas. Now, before we proceed, checking model assumptions in GLM and GLMM. Yes, we have talked about this before, but then let me um, reinforce it. So before applying any model, we must check whether the data meets certain assumptions. One is checking for linearity. So linearity means the relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable, and it should be straight. A scattered plot helps to visualize if the assumptions holds but then what if the linearity is violated you may need to transform the data or use a different model two checking for normality in glm and glmm residues should should follow a normal distribution for continuous outcome also a histogram or qq plot helps check this what if normality is violated GLM and GLMM are robust 
to slight violation of normality. If the violation is severe, consider using a different link function or non-parametric method. Key takeaways. 1. GLM is useful for small regression when observations are independent. 2. GLMM is needed when data is grouped, such as students in different schools. Thir uh, 3. Both models require assumptions about linearity, normality, and independence. 4. Reward applications include medicine, education, and business analytics. So here are my final thoughts. Understanding GLM versus GLMM is essential for choosing the right model in research and industry. If your data is simple, GLM is fine. But if your data has a grouped structures, GLMM is the way to go. In our next tutorial, we are going to look at how to compare these two models using a real life data in R. See you in the next lecture.